Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to rotate and scale in Photoshop. So the first thing we have to understand about rotating and scaling is what we're rotating and scaling. So I have a little uh, demonstration here for you. This is a photo frame, and in Photoshop lingo, this is what we would call our canvas. So everything you see through this glass, that's your canvas. Okay, so now portrait, landscape, that's your canvas. This is a layer. And if your document only has one layer, it's normally your background layer. But any, any uh, document has at least one layer. All right, so that's your layer. These two things combined is what Photoshop calls your image. So if you're going to scale your image or you're going to rotate your image, what you're doing is you're scaling both of these. You're making them smaller or bigger or you're rotating both of these. Now you can also make your canvas bigger or smaller. All right, and we can do that independent of the layers. Now one last thing I want to show you is more than one layer, okay? So here we have two layers, one image, another image, pasted on top of each other. This is, uh, we've got some masks, some intricate selections there, and those are inside our canvas. And let's position those. Ah, that looks beautiful. All right, so here we go. <laughs> this is our true life Photoshop document. So layer one, layer two, canvas. This combined is called your image. All right, so that's, that's what you need to know before we head into the actual uh, tutorial. And the tutorial is broken down into two parts. Our first part is where we talk about rotating and scaling the image and the canvas. And then the second part of the tutorial is where we're going to talk about rotating and scaling actual layers. Now, if you want to follow along, I have put a link in the description. You can download all the assets we're going to use for this tutorial. Let's get started. All right, let's go to File, Open. We're going to open the file called Jacob Owens. And what I want to do is I want to change this to an 8x10 photo that's 300 uh, dots per inch or pixels per inch. So let's go to image, image size. And this is the image size dialog. This is the image size in megabytes. This is the pixel dimensions. This is the size in inches at 72 pixels per inch. Now here you can change this to millimeters, centimeters, I believe the default is pixels, but we're going to go ahead and keep that on inches because we know we want to make this 8 by 10. Resample tells you whether it's going to change the pixel dimensions of the image or not. In this case, because a 300, because uh, photo printers need 300 pixels, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off resampling, change this to 300, and already you can see we're down to 17 inches by 11. So now let's go ahead and change the height to eight inches. And we're gonna to have to crop that last inch 0.725 off in order to make it eight by 10. But now you can see our resolution is too high. So now we're gonna turn on resampling and change this to 300. Let's hit okay. And you can see there the image size got a bit smaller. If I went here and changed this to with resampling turned on, change this to closer to five by seven. Again, you can see the image is getting smaller. So let's undo that, Command Z. Now I want to take off that extra 1.7 off the sides of this. So here I'm gonna to go to image, canvas size, change this to pixels, or sorry, change it from pixels to inches, and then change this to 10 inches and hit OK. It's going to ask me if I want to clip the image. 
because the canvas size that I've determined here is smaller than my image. So I'm going to say proceed. And if I do Command Z, you can see that we've now cropped the image and we have an 8 by 10 image that's 300 resolutions, perfect size to get an 8 by 10 printed. All right, next I'm going to show you how to use the crop tool. So let's go to File, Open, and we're going to open Lane Model 02. And in this case, I want to resize the image, but I want to crop it, meaning I want to change what the frame is showing. So to do that, I'm going to go in the crop tool here. And here I can also determine that I want an 8 by 10 or a 5 by 7. In this case, let's do a 5 by 7. So there you can see that's the 5 by 7. And if I want to flip this, I can click on here and that'll flip the dimensions. And if I want to reset this, I can click here and that'll open it back up to the original size. So let's go back to 5 by 7 and let's flip it. And in this case, I want her eye to be in this cross section of the top third and the right third of the image. Now you can see this overlay here is the rule of thirds. If I want to change that, I'm going to click here and you can see a lot of other overlay options that I have. And if I want to toggle through those, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard to toggle through them. All right, but I want this one. So I am going to now move her by clicking and dragging so that her eye is right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this anchor point and move it to there. So now when I take one of these edges, I can hold down Option and hold down shift to keep my proportions and you can see that it's scaling to her eye there. It's keeping that always in the same place in my grid. So that's where I want it. One other thing to note here is this delete cropped pixels. Generally you want that turned off and the reason why is if I now click this I can still go back on my move tool and move her around within the canvas I'm going to go Command Z and undo the crop. And I'm going to show you what happens if I don't have that turned on. So let's go ahead and do that again real quick. Now, if I move her around, you can see there's no other information there. So all that other information in that layer is now gone. So. When you're on your crop tool, make sure that that is turned off. The only time I actually use that is if I have a large document with many layers and I'm trying to decrease the size of my document because I'm going to send it to someone or need to save it to um, archives or what have you. You can do that. You can take your document with all the layers and simply hit the crop, go in the crop tool, reset it, turn that on, and commit that crop. And what it'll do is it won't change the size of your image or change the size of your canvas, but it'll cut everything that's outside on every layer. It'll cut that away, and that can significantly decrease your file size. Okay, next we're going to go to File, Open, and now I'm going to show you how to rotate an image in Photoshop. So let's start with Lane Model 03. And both of these model photos, by the way, are available on my Photoshop Starter Kit as camera raw files. Um, and camera raw files are a great way to practice with Photoshop because it allows you to use the camera raw settings. You have a lot, of, a lot more pixel information to use when you're making selections, when you're practicing with the various color corrections and so forth. I'll leave a link in the description for that. Okay, so now we're going to go to Image, Image Rotation, 
And this is how you're going to rotate your image. And remember at the beginning of this tutorial, the image is your canvas plus your layers. So I'm going to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. Commando to fit. And there you can see both my canvas and my layer have been rotated. And in here you can also do it 180. You can do it counterclockwise. And also you'll see here you can flip the whole canvas both vertically and horizontally. And there is one more thing here. This is a recent addition to Photoshop. Previous versions didn't have this. Realize that your canvas is always going to be rectangular. You can't have a dia diagonal canvas in Photoshop um, because all the Photoshop format and all the formats that Photoshop saves to are always rectangular. So what this will do is it will rotate everything inside your canvas and then resize the canvas to accommodate the rotated image. So, and depend if you have a background that you're doing it on, not a layered file, what it's going to do is it's going to use your background color here to fill in that missing space. So let's go ahead and select this color here. Go to image arbitrary and let's type 15 hit OK and there you can see it's used this background color rotated the image and resized the canvas to accommodate the rotated image so let's command Z that and let's close this file next we're gonna go to file open and we're going to rotate straighten and in this case what I want to do is I want to rotate the image inside my canvas but I do not want to rotate my canvas so the way I'm going to do that is go on to the crop tool and here as I'm going along the edges you can see my tooltip changes if I go on the outside bounds of that it changes to a rotate and if I click and start dragging, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the image, but the crop will stay with inside the image dimensions. So regardless of how I rotate it, it's always going to keep the image inside my crop. So let's reset that. So that's how you rotate again to commit command Z and in this case obviously I would want to turn this off so now let's do it again I'm going to rotate and there you have it if I go back onto my move tool you can see my whole layer is there but it's rotated inside the canvas one last thing I want to show you let's go back in our history here to the beginning is how to straighten in this case you can see if I turn on a ruler command R and drag a guide down here you can see that this line is not straight so in order to fix that what we're gonna do is go back onto our crop tool and you'll notice this straighten tool right here I'm gonna click on that and the way you use this is you click and drag to make a horizontal line and you can also use it vertically in this photo obviously our um, horizontal line is much more clear than any vertical line but you can also use it this way by clicking here and trying to find a vertical line now in this case I don't think the bottle is per perfectly uh, vertical but I do know that this line down here is perfectly horizontal and realize that these lines only work 90 degrees um, and whatever you're closer to is what it's going to think that is so for example if I wanted to rotate the image 90 degrees I cannot use the straighten tool I would have to use the rotate but um, to make small rotation corrections like this it's perfect and if I'm using my crop tool and I don't want to go up here and click, 
if you hold down the command key, you temp your tool temp temporarily changes to the straighten tool. Now the last thing I want to show you is this content aware. So what that does is let's go to our crop and I want to reset this. Actually, I want to go back in my history to here, to the very beginning, and go in the crop tool. And I'm going to straighten the image. And now you'll notice that it's cropped it. Now in this case, I want to maximize the amount of image that I'm using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on Content Aware and you'll notice when I did that, my crop got bigger. And what it's doing is it's keeping the center points on the left and right and top and bottom. And it's going to use its AI to fill in these blank sections based on the information that's around it. So if I hit OK, you're going to see it added wood pattern up here. It added some floor down here. And it's doing that using AI. So you can use that. Um, I don't find I, I use it often, but if I were working with more images that I'm cropping and so forth, it is a great tool. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to know about rotating and scaling images in Photoshop. The next thing we're going to look at is how to rotate and scale layers in Photoshop. All right, let's go to File, Open. And we're going to open this Rotate and Scale Sample. This is the same file we opened previously, the JPEG. But in this case, what I've done is I've turned it into three separate layers. So one, we have a background, we have a hand, and we have the lens. These are layers. These layers have transparency. This layer does not. All right, so there is no Rotate or scale tool in Photoshop, which a lot of people coming from other programs find confusing. The reason for that is both of those are available through the free transform tool, which is Command T. And that's a shortcut you're going to use all the time. So really learn that Command T is free transform. When you activate that, you'll notice a, bo a bounding box around your layer with handles and an anchor point very similar to the crop dialog. So in this case, if I hover outside of the bounding box, I can rotate. And if I click on any of the edges, I can scale. In order to keep the dimensions and not scale disproportionately, I can click on this anchor here. And if I want to scale up or down from the anchor point, I'm going to hold down Option. And when you rotate, it's always going to rotate from the anchor point. You don't need to hold down Option for that. So that anchor point is very useful, um, especially if, for example, you know, you're rotating something against a ground or a pivot or a pipe or what have you utilize this anchor point to determine where it's going to rotate from. Okay, you can also, if you, if you have an exact amount that you need to rotate it, you can put that here. You can also scrub this to rotate. You can also scrub these to scale or type in a number. And to commit, you're going to hit the check mark or just click outside. And to not commit, you're going to click on this, or you can just hit escape on the keyboard. So that really is the simplicity of scaling and rotating in Photoshop when it comes to layers. Now, if you prefer to always be able to rotate and scale without hitting Command T, what you can do is turn this on, show transform controls. And what that does is whenever you have a layer selected, it always shows you that free transform control. Now you should note that when you select a layer and move it, it's not activating the free transform. Only once you click on one of these points or start rotating, will the free transform dialog appear up here. 
and that's when you have to either escape or commit that transform. So moving uh, a layer around your canvas is independent of the free transform. One last thing to note is in your free transform, if you right mouse click, you have the option of flip horizontal and flip vertical, same as on the image and the uh, image rotation. So if you want to do it on a layer instead of an image, activate your free transform and go down here, flip for horizontal and flip vertical. Personally, I do not like having this show transform controls. When I'm doing a large composite, I want to be able to see the whole composite without any overlays. So I keep that off and when I need to rotate or scale a layer in Photoshop, I'll simply do Command T. Now, if you want to rotate and scale more than one layer at a time, what you can do is select the layer and then hold down shift to select the next layer. Or you can, if you want to skip a layer, you can hold down control, or sorry, command and select two layers that way. Also, if there's two layers or more than two layers that you're always going to uh, want to transform together, what you can do is select both of them and click on this little link down here. Now, if I'm on the hand and I do Command T for transform, you'll notice my bounding box is on both of them. And then I'm going to transform both of them at the same time. One last thing I should note here is that I'm going to unlink these. And you can see they have a link here. In order to unlink them, you can unlink just that layer. But if all three layers are linked like this, and I click on this one and unlink it, these two layers will still be linked. So if you want to unlink everything, select all of them, and then click the toggle that unlink. In the latest version of Photoshop, they changed the transform behavior so that if you start dragging one of these points, it's, it's automatically going to have this lock turned on. And holding shift is going to temporarily unlock it. So holding shift is going to make it so that you can scale the object disproportionately. Now, all previous versions of Photoshop had this behavior flipped so that holding down shift kept your proportions and letting uh, go of shift allowed you to freely move that anchor point around. Um, I really don't know why Photoshop changed this because the scale behavior is still with shift keeping the proportions. Uh, so is many of the other tools in Photoshop. And so is the transform in Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects. So for my version of Photoshop, I've changed the behavior back to what it used to be. And I will include a link in the description so that you can see how to change that behavior back. All right, there you have it. That is how you scale and rotate in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like, comment, share. I am really interested in knowing what you thought of it. If you have any questions, if there's something you need help with in Photoshop and specifically Photoshop compositing, please do let me know. I do have premium courses on compositing, which you can find at nuclei.com and you can download design assets there. I actually have a Photoshop starter kit, which I highly recommend you get. It's entirely free. You just need to subscribe to my newsletter. And that has two of the images that we used in this. It also has a whole bunch of clouds, flares, light rays, gradient presets, watercolor brushes, all sorts of assets that are amazing if you want to get into the exciting world of Photoshop compositing. All right, I will see you next time. Here's some other videos to check out. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button. You see my ugly mug there, my little icon? Yeah, click on it and subscribe.